So how we achieve this is by running events to network and share knowledge and COVID-19 hasn't stopped us. We've had this great relationship with B4, bringing you uh, weekly webinars after, over the last few months. Um, and we focus our uh, work around the areas that are proving most interest to members at the moment. So we have four special interest groups looking at low carbon mobility, the circular economy, the built environment, and crucially access to finance that is gonna help all of our members achieve what they want to achieve. The network's over 100 members now, uh, and we work very closely with our partners that I mentioned, Cambridgeshire Clean Tech, who are at the other end of the Oxfordshire Cambridge knowledge arc. Uh, and membership of Oxfordshire Green Tech automatically brings membership of uh, Cambridgeshire Clean Tech and vice versa, so that we can increase the number of opportunities for visibility, collaboration, and uh, business opportunities for our members. So if you're interested in joining the network, um, do get in touch through uh, website or social media uh, and we'd love to talk to you more about uh, how membership works and all that sort of thing. But I'm not going to do that now. We're going to move on and hear about um, the Energy Solutions Oxfordshire or ESOX. Uh, and now I'm going to hand over to the team and to Tabitha Whiting. Tabitha is going to kick it off for us. Tabitha is the marketing manager for the whole of the low carbon hub. And now she's also taking on um, uh, managing the marketing side for Energy Solutions Oxfordshire. Uh, so that'll keep her busy. So Tabitha and team, please tell us more. Thanks Philippa. Um, so yeah, as Philippa said, my name is Tabitha Whiting and I'm marketing manager at the low carbon hub. Uh, which is a social enterprise working to prove that we can manage our energy needs in a way that's good for people and for the planet. So that means both powering up and we create and manage renewable installations across Oxfordshire, but it also means powering down uh, with, we work on several programs which are reducing energy demand and increasing energy efficiency. And that kind of energy efficiency side is what we're here to talk about today. And specifically, as Phil mentioned, about Energy Solutions Oxfordshire, which is our newest program at the hub. Um, it's a non-profit organisation working to improve the energy efficiency of commercial buildings across Oxfordshire in collaboration with Energy Pro and the Oxford Brooks Environmental in Information Exchange team. So the point of this webinar is that you'll find out more about exactly how Energy Solutions Oxfordshire works. Um, and I'll be hosting it and posing questions to three guests who I'll introduce in a second. Um, but that's how it's going to work. We'll take, you can use the chat, um, which you should see at the bottom of your screen to, throughout. If you have any questions, please drop them in there and we'll either pick them up throughout or Philip will be running a little Q&A at the end. So yeah, so I'll introduce you to who we'll have with us today so that you know who's who on your screens. Um, so first we have Richard Dory. He's our business development manager at the Low Carbon Hub. I'm waving at you now. Um, and he's gonna be working on, well, is working on Energy Solutions Oxfordshire. He has over 30 years of experience in business development, as well as a personal interest in green energy and running sprint triathlons. Uh, then we also have Alison Grunewald, who's our business relationship manager at the Low Carbon Hub. Um, and she's also working on Energy Solutions Oxfordshire and has been working on Ox Futures, which some of you might know about for the past three years and still today. She's also a qualified chartered surveyor. And finally, we have John Hill. Um, he's one of the trustees at the Abbey in Sutton Courtney, as well as being a master rower and physiotherapist. And he's here to tell us about energy efficiency work undertaken at the Abbey as kind of an example of how this could work for, for your organisations. So that's introductions. And then let's get started on the actual webinar. Um, so first, we're going to speak to Richard, um, who's going to tell us a bit more about what Energy Solutions Oxfordshire is and how it could support your business. Um, so let's start there. Richard, can you tell us what Energy Solutions Oxfordshire is? Okay, um, I think as both Philippa and Tabitha have mentioned already, um, ESOX, as I'm going to call it, um, is a single centre of expertise uh, to support organisations, starting off with SMEs who are otherwise short of time, resource, expertise and financial options to implement those buildings-based energy savings projects for their premises, hopefully with positive financial environmental impacts. I think just you know, basically backing up everything that uh, Tabitha said already. Great, and how did it come about? Why did, why did the hub specifically decide to set this up? Um, it's come about um, 
primarily uh, for a number of reasons, um, different people coming together as these projects do. Um, as pe many people on the call will understand, there's a project called Ox Futures, which is being run by Low Carbon Hub already. Um, and they've been working with the EIE team at Oxford Brookes University. Uh, and a third party called Energy Pro um, has entered into partnership uh, to create what is known as an energy services company idea, um, sort of an energy services company in a box. And ESOX has been formed as a sort of lead project on that for Oxfordshire. Um, that came as, out as a result of the work that they're doing with Ox Futures and doing audits on SMEs around Oxfordshire. Uh, identifying, you know, through those audits, what projects could be undertaken to reduce energy usage within a building. Um, in many cases, the management of those companies would implement the easy to implement projects uh, to get some initial savings, but the more difficult projects were not implemented because of lack of time, resource and finance potentially. And that was identified through some additional research the team did last year. So really ESOCs came into being to provide that, um, provide the project management, the resource, the expertise, and the finance options to be able to help the SMEs move forward with those projects. It's a very underserved market, we believe in Oxfordshire, in supporting SMEs. A lot of consultants and so on like to go for the big, big projects. Uh, we think that given that 40% of the market in Oxfordshire is based on SMEs, um, there's, a, there's a large market for us to go and support. Just to highlight, outside of Oxfordshire, Energy Pro, the other company, is looking to spread that around the UK um, as part of their energy services um, in a box type operation. Great. And you've mentioned already kind of SMEs being the audience for this. But within that, is there a, is a specific types of businesses that we really think this could work for? Um, a whole range, really, um, running from private estates through to industrial units, um, office blocks, anybody who really wants to implement energy efficiency, save money on their bills and help to reduce their carbon emissions going forwards. Um, it's focused primarily on SMEs to begin with because we've um, funded initially um, by the project called Boosting Access for SMEs to Energy Efficiency, which I'll shorten to BASI. Um, so up until April next year, we're, we're focusing on SMEs. After April next year, we'll be able to look at any size of the company. Brilliant. And that's kind of why we particularly wanted to introduce ESOX to this Green Fox, which are green tech audience, because yeah. it aligns so well with what you guys are doing. Um, but on that, so I'm going to move on to John Hill now, um, who, as I mentioned before, is here to kind of give us an example of what Rich has just said in practice. Um, so as I said earlier, John's one of the trustees at the Abbey in Sutton Courtney, and the Abbey is a grade one listed medieval building, which has been transformed into a retreat and conference center, as well as being home to a small resident community. Um, we actually worked with the Abbey on their energy use and improving the energy efficiency of their buildings through Ox Futures, which you've mentioned already, but it gives a kind of idea of the types of projects that we're looking to work with and what we could do with you through Energy Solutions Oxfordshire. So welcome to John. Thank you. Thank you. To see. Well, uh, we got involved because um, we were looking to, to uh, bring ourselves into the, uh, the, the 21st century. Um, and looking at the aerial view there, we've got the, the main abbey, which goes back to the 12th century, some parts of it. Um, and then other extensions have happened since. And uh, one of the residents, there's only four residents in the community, one of the residents reached out and uh, came across um, the uh, organization that was Ox Futures, LCH, and it was involved with Ox, Oxford Brooks as well or is involved with Oxford Books. And um, they came along and very enthusiastically did an audit of everything that we um, had in terms of potential, our energy usage, our setup, and an awful lot of things that we found out that we didn't know we needed to find out about and we could do something about. Um, and the initial focus of what we uh, looked at and saw we could do so constructively. If you look at the photograph there, that sort of bottom right hand complex is apart from the vegetable garden, sustainable organics, foods and things like that, is a guest house. Um, you can just sort of see a, um, uh, an upside down T in the sunlight and going into the shadow. Um, and that's a sort of discrete unit 
uh, of accommodation which is used for um, overnight stays and is a part of the commercial side of the Abbey which receives no grant, grants or funds and has to sort of sustain itself by uh, renting out accommodation uh, on sort of B&B, Airbnb um, and obviously conferences, maybe weekend conferences, yoga classes and stuff like that. So what they did is they came along and uh, told us what a dreadful state things were in and what an amazing state they could be in with a little bit of help. Um, specifically, they looked at the lighting, um, reduce, reducing, it, reducing energy consumption by using LEDs, the, uh, the draft exclusions, the um, thermal um, curtain thingies on the windows, uh, insulation in the lofts, obviously, and um, more efficient use of the, the heating that was being used. There, there was sort of energy, what you call them, um, storage heaters. And uh, they sort of tended to uh, boost up overnight and then expend their energy during the day, whether or not things were occupied or not. So there's a whole mass of stuff. And, and what the exciting thing about working with this organization or these organizations was, was the, the fact that it focused our minds on the actual way that a business is run, our specific business was run, and the way that our buildings could be um, improved, not specifically just to save money. I mean, the, the actual main benefit in, in the longer term for our business model is actually the, the client experience. You know, we have guests coming along and they don't want to be in drafty places. Yes, it's very quaint being in a 12th century gee, isn't this wonderful and spiritual and stuff like that. But if you're freezing to death or, or sort of getting overheated and stuff like that in the summer, it's just not a good setup. So we found ourselves very much in partnership with these people. They, they, they act much more as our friends rather than uh, we as their clients. Um, and they also provided um, £2,000 in an £8,000 budget towards the costs of the initial phases that we've done. Um, and I can't, as you can imagine, uh, support them and uh, commend them well enough. It's just a wonderful, wonderful relationship. Great. Thanks, John. You've kind of covered everything I wanted to ask you there. Um, but as a kind of looking back to the bigger picture, so you've mentioned kind of the benefits for your organisation and how much it's benefited the comfort of your guests and saving money as well. But would, do you think there's kind of a need for more projects like yours? Would you recommend other SMEs and organisations to look at doing this kind of work? I think it'd be uh, irresponsible of them not to do so. I mean, the, the very fact that they, uh, I mean, I think it's as, as vital or perhaps fractionally less so than the sort of the, the health and safety and the personnel care and stuff like that, that every, um, every CEO, every COO should be aware of their energy usage audit, their, you know, the way that they are set up, the way that they are currently using it. It's very easy to sort of come into an office environment or a, a school environment or, you know, as we are a hospitality environment and just depend upon switching on a light and even putting things on a timer and thinking that you're doing a good job. Uh, and it's not just about sort of the few pennies that you can save here, here and there. The, the, the enthusiasm, the, the, the bringing together of a, a sort of a team to address this, the information that we got from it, the focus it gave us in terms of a project was, you know, it's invaluable. You know, the, these are sort of the, the benefits that uh, perhaps um, unquantifiable, but uh, it gave us such a buzz round the Abbey that we were doing these really exciting things and finding out these really good things. And it ticked so many good boxes, you know, eco savings and money savings and guest benefits. And, you know, who, who wouldn't want, want to do that? What's not to like? That's brilliant. Thank you. Um, and John's going to be sticking around for the rest of the webinar. So if you do have any questions about the Abbey's experience or John's experience with working on kind of energy efficiency measures, do just pop them in the chat and we'll pick them up. As I, I'm said. going off uh, off screen though. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we'll talk, so John's mentioned as well, some of the bits of the process, so things like finance um, and auditing, and we'll, we'll go into that a bit deeper with Richard in a second. Um, but for now, I'm going to bring Alison into the front, um, who's going to give more of an overview of some of the other kinds of energy efficiency projects that we've worked on, um, as well as the Abbey from Ox Futures. So welcome to Alison, who I mentioned previously, she's our business relationship manager at the Low Carbon Hub, um, working across both Ox Futures and Energy Solutions Oxfordshire. So Alison, could you run us through a couple of other kind of examples of energy efficiency projects within Oxfordshire businesses? So I'm going to run through four examples from the 140 odd energy audits that Oxfutures has um, undertaken. 
And the first is um, Thames Cryogenic. This was a £15,000 upgrade to their office heaters and lighting. And they installed LED task lighting, which had a payback of only two years and improved their productivity and safety. So that was very much geared not just to cost savings, but the benefits to staff. The second example, Nitron Racing, was a £27,000 project to improve the insulation. They put insulation above their suspended ceiling and fitted new insulated roller doors and replaced their single glazing with double glazing. And the ceiling insulation is predicted to pay back in five years and the workers really reduced their drafts and improved their staff comfort. I've got an office example here, which um, was a £25,000 project, replacing inefficient and poorly controllable 1990s night storage heaters with air source heat pumps. And this firm of accountants have significantly reduced their um, bills and improved comfort. And then the final example is um, a community arts centre that had a £20,000 upgrade to their heating and lighting. And they replaced some electric panel heaters and fan convectors with um, an extended gas fired wet heating system from the church next door that they work very closely with. And they're saving over £8,000 a year. That project will pay back in two and a half years. And it's, as well as those very large financial benefits, they've got improved facilities for their users and they're hoping it'll increase their venue hire. So there's multiple reasons why you would want to do an energy efficiency project. And that just gives you a flavour of some of the things that we've done. Thank you, Alison. So as you can see, there's kind of a broad range of businesses and measures that this could apply to um, and how it would benefit you as a company as well. So now, as I said, we're going to delve a little bit further into the process of how this actually all works. Um, and then we'll we'll go to questions if anyone has any. Um, so back to Richard. Richard, is there a defined process for implementing these kinds of energy efficiency projects? Um again uh, the answer to that is yes there is a defined process that we're currently setting up um, for implementing the projects and this will be on our website when the website's up and running um, but at the moment you can find that under the programs section of the low carbon hub uh, website uh, there's a detailed process flowchart mapped out there um, the process is as i say being finalized at the moment as part of the project we're running through right now and the benefit for our customers this year is that when we get to the final implementation plan um, that will be provided for free of charge um, then next year if the customers decide not to move forward with the projects that we suggest uh, based on the implementation plan we will be charging for that implementation plan uh, just to cover our costs so for any customers that would like to move forward this year um, now's a good time to work with us and help defining that process. It'd be very useful to have you on board. Absolutely. And that's because of the funding that we mentioned earlier. So we're funded for this year, which means we can, yeah, give those for free whilst we're figuring everything else out. Yeah. Um, thanks, Richard. And what's the first step? How would we start to determine what work would make sense for a particular organisation? Um, well, right now, you'd have to send me an email um, and then we'd probably come and visit you. But the first pay step when the, the site is up, the process is up and running will be um, to go to our website and to fill in a, a simple form that we've created, which will request some information about your business and about energy usage and so on. And that will enable us to carry out a desktop analysis um, and provide an initial report uh, based on the information provided. Um, assuming the customer likes that report and they want to move forwards to the next stage, we'll then do a, an on-site visit um, and carry out an audit of the building or buildings um, that they want to move forwards with. Um, we'll then, following on, the part of the process is to get contractors involved um, and then provide a preliminary, pre, preliminary implementation plan. 
um, which we'll then discuss with the customer to enable them to make decisions about which contractors to use. As John mentioned, all of that is done in partnership. Um, and then once all decisions have been made, um, we'll create a full implementation plan and also provide a finance um, plan for that as well, if it's required. Great, and one of the real benefits of working with ESOCs on this is that we essentially act as project manager for the whole project. So could you tell us a bit more about that aspect of how we deal with the project management? Yeah, so obviously, um, Part of our role will be to take, you know, as I mentioned back at the beginning, some of the issues that SMEs have today is that time um, issue because they're running a bit, running, running a business. Um, so part of our role is to take on that whole project management for the for the entire project, um, and to make sure that the contractors deliver what they say they're going to deliver, and to do the measurement and validation post uh, delivery so that the project is successful. Great. So the, the role of ESOCs ends after the point of installation. So there's this kind of maintenance and quality assurance aspect as well, which is another kind of benefit of working yeah, I mean, with us. Yeah, it doesn't finish, you know, as soon as the contractors have moved off site. Mm -hmm. um, the, the key thing is that whatever's in, installed actually meets the um, promises that the contractors make in terms of energy savings. So we will be implementing a range of measurement and validation processes um, that will go on for at least 12 months after the, after the project is finished. So the cust we can then go back to the customer and say, this is what's been achieved. These are the savings you're making. It's contributing to the costs. Um, and those measurement and validation process will continue once we've left site. Um, but the key thing is to make sure that the contractors do deliver um, on time and you know, deliver the promises they've made. Great. And we know that as well as the time aspect for SMEs and businesses, sometimes those upfront costs for this kind of work. And Alison mentioned some of the ranges of um, costs for these kind of projects. Um, Richard, you've mentioned kind of financing packages. What can you unpack that a little bit more? What are the kind of grants or financing opportunities that might be available? Again, currently we've got the opportunity to work with the Ox Futures team um, to see if there's some other projects will be applicable to that 25% grant that can be awarded. Um, we're also working with some finance companies to be able to offer financing for projects of this size, um, you know, such that the savings made from the energy project, energy reduction projects we put in place help contribute towards the cost of the financing over a two or five or seven year payback period. Yeah, and all of those things are what we think really sets Energy Solutions Oxfordshire apart from our existing programmes and other existing opportunities for SMEs that we're really trying to make the process as simple and as desirable as possible for, for SMEs. Yeah, um, and obviously I must mention that we're following what's going to happen this afternoon uh, with the Chancellor making his announcements um, around what else is going to be available in terms of grants um, for any um, public organisations or SMEs and so on. So. Obviously, anything that comes along there will incorporate into what we can offer going forwards. Yes, indeed. Um, so that's everything I wanted to cover in terms of questions. And all that's left is just to remind of next steps and then um, we'll go into questions. But so, Richard, if someone's watching this webinar and is interested and wants to know more or wants to get started on this process, what do they do? Um, right now, probably send me an email, uh, richard.dory at energysolutionsoxfordshire.org. If you didn't quite catch that, you can find that on the Low Carbon Hub website under the ESOCs program page. Um, you could also go to hello at energysolutionsoxfordshire.org um, and we'll respond to that very quickly. Um, and I'll come back to you straight away. Great, and I'll, I'll drop that link and Richard's email in the chat once we go on to questions as well so that it's there for you. And I think um, Philippa will be circulating some information afterwards. Um, so yeah, that's everything we wanted to cover in this introduction, but we do have time left for questions um, and I'll pass you over to Philippa to manage that part. Great, thank you very much uh, to everyone. That was great. I think you've explained things really clearly and uh, it was great to hear the um, examples from John and the other ones that Alison shared just to show all the um, all the benefits. So, um, yeah, I got out of that uh, is en obviously energy savings, but there are so many other co-benefits as well. 
Um, it's really easy because ESOCs manage the whole thing, which is exactly as Richard was saying is what SMEs want. And there's financing options at any time you'd look at, but particularly at the moment, getting quick because there's some funding available. I think those are probably the, the key message we ought to get out to, uh, to everyone. Um, great, we've got some questions coming through. So let me just have a look. Right, okay. Um, what forms of cavity wall insulation and roof attic insulation do you recommend? Oh, getting into the detail here. Is that something you want to take, uh, take very quickly? Because uh, the others are a bit more about how the ESOCs will operate, that sort of thing. Do you just I'll want to take Alison that one? Yeah. That one. <laughs> I, I think um, it's worth talking to a reputable installer to find out what the latest insulation is that they recommend. Um, most cavity wall insulation is the sort of spray foam insulation. Um, one of the issues to consider with loft insulation is whether you're um, a historic building or not, because there are some quite interesting um, natural products like sheep's wool insulation that's hydroscopic. So it'll help buffer changes in the moisture level and um, will stop timbers rotting. But um, yes, I mean, there's a lot of products on the market. Um, and yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, I think that's when you get into the, the detail of your plan. Yeah. Um, so question from Jeremy from Oxlep, um, a local enterprise partnership for Oxfordshire. How much is charged to an SME who wants to undertake an Ox Futures energy audit? Or are those audits now superseded by ESOCs? Uh, with their, their implementation plans and is there a management charge that ESOCs charge for overseeing any installation? Richard do you want me to answer that? Yeah, I think that's probably yeah. yeah. So um, there is there's no charge for either an Ox Futures audit or an ESOCs energy audit. Um, at this point, so the ESOCs energy audits, once we get to the implementation plan from April of next year, there will be a thousand pound charge for one of those for all the work to get to that point in the project. If the project doesn't go ahead, if the client decides that they do want to implement it, that cost will just be wrapped up into the project cost. In terms of the charge that um, ESOCs make for overseeing the installation and doing all the monitoring um, work and uh, validation work on the energy savings. Um, it's a 30% of capital cost fee for delivering that. Okay, thank, thanks very much. That, that That's clear. But of course, the idea is that the savings pay for for all of this, isn't it? So yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, next one from uh, John. What geographical area does ESOCs operate in? Just um, Oxfordshire. Pure, just Oxfordshire. Yeah. So the county county boundaries. Uh, th 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 that's the, the the specific definition. Okay, there you go, John. Um, uh, Right, we've got another one. What are the biggest forms of energy use in commercial buildings? Is it heating, lighting, uh, and where are the biggest potential areas that, that you've seen in your experience of the audits? Probably Alison. Yeah, <laughs> so um, it really depends on what you're, you've currently got installed. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of lighting that can be upgraded to LEDs. Um, the uh, spread of LED lighting is still quite low and LED lighting tends to pay back in uh, approximately two to three years. Um, heating, it depends how recently the heating was upgraded. So even, I mean, that example of that accountants, you know, that building was built in the 1990s, but it was, you know, still installed with these old fashioned um, night storage heaters and so I mean that's a technology that is right for um, 
being replaced with something more efficient like air source heat pumps. Great, thank you. I think that's all the questions in the chat. Uh, any more questions from anyone? Got another one. No, I think we've covered all of them so far. Any last questions? Okay, and I think thanks, Tabitha, for putting the details in there. Uh, and as I say, we will, um, uh, uh, Lorna from B4 will be sending around a recording of this um, webinar and all the details as well for how people should should get in touch. And we'll certainly promote this to Oxfordshire Green Tech because we'll be bringing in the companies that want to help undertake this work as well as those who, who want to be the clients um, as well. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm just going to wrap up and uh, just wanted to mention our next um, events that we've got coming up. We're not going quite over the over the summer. Um, hopefully you can see that. No, let's get this up properly. There we go. Right, and then these are the events that are coming up. Um, yeah, so people might be planning to take summer holidays now that that seems, seems possible, but hopefully you'll be around for some of these um, events. Um, on the 23rd of July, Bioregional is uh, going to be following up um, the work that we've been doing over the last uh, 18 months on uh, the One Planet Living vision that was developed, um, co-created with stakeholders uh, 18 months ago, uh, what's been happening and how that could be a really useful structure for taking forward uh, developments in the county post COVID-19. Um, in fact, all of these events have a very much a build back better uh, theme. Um, Oxfordshire Green Tech is partnering with Smart Oxford uh, for three events on Tuesday uh, afternoons um, in, uh, sorry, Sorry, I've got the wrong date on there. It's the 28th of July and the 4th and the 11th of August, of course. Um, and these are going to be um, uh, very much interactive hackathons, um, we like to call them, where we're looking to bring together the solution providers with communities and organisations and individuals who've got ideas for, we really need something that will do X, Y and Z to help uh, improved uh, sustainability uh, is going to be the focus of the first one, uh, circular economy as well, and the 11th of August, uh, looking at inclusivity, particularly in the in the job market. Um, so we'd very much like people to get, get involved in those uh, and contribute ideas, that, that would be great, and then we can feed back on, on how those develop. All those details are on the Oxfordshire Green Tech website, um, and uh, get the more, more details and the, and the registration links there. So um, just remains for me to say thank you very much for the um, ESOX team. It is a very exciting prospect. I think there's lots of organisations across Oxfordshire uh, could benefit from this and we really encourage everyone to get in touch uh, with, with Richard and get your foot in the door early to get that funding. Um, so thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you to our friends at B4 for hosting this webinar today. Uh, as I say, more details to come round uh, to follow up, um, but do get in touch with the team if you have any questions. <laughs>